All right, good afternoon, everyone. I think we can get ourselves started here. Um, I know some people will hop in a little bit later, um, but just as a reminder, this webinar is going to be recorded um, and it will be put on the Congresswoman's official website later on um, after it gets downloaded and everything else. Um, I'm Michael Stadelmeyer. I'm with Congresswoman Claudia Tenney's staff. I am here uh, to help present today with our monthly webinar series. We have um, the SBA uh, as our host today, and we have Dan Rickman from our SBA Syracuse office, and he will be presenting on ways that the SBA can help small businesses, um, give some support to our communities, um, and general um, uh, focus on small business uh, programs that SBA has coming down the pipeline. So Dan, with that, I will hand that off to you. All right, thank you so much, Michael. Appreciate um, appreciate the invitation, first of all, and um, I'd like to thank uh, you know certainly um, Congressman Tenney for you know her support uh, of well certainly small business and and our programs um, uh, over the years. So, um, uh, like Michael said, you know my name is Dan. I am the Deputy District Director for the Syracuse Upstate New York District Office, and um, you know we. Uh, you know, have a pretty pretty broad footprint with respect to helping small businesses. Um, you know, of course, we are the federal agency that is explicitly tasked uh, with helping small businesses, created in 1953. So we are approaching our 70th anniversary of about a month from now, um, which is which is cool. Um, but today we're going to cover you know kind of a high level overview of how we support small businesses you know our, our kind of uh, top top areas of focus programs and how you can access those programs and services um with that let me go ahead and start sharing my screen for you folks that's the one all right All right, <clears throat> so uh, first we'll start with the Syracuse District of SBA. Um, we are headquartered in Syracuse, like Michael mentioned, and our office covers about two thirds of the state. You know, this uh, New York State has three district offices, so the Congresswoman's District is gonna be covered by um, uh, our office here in, in Syracuse, uh, and part of it will be covered out of our Buffalo office, uh, which co will cover more of Western New York the gray area on the left-hand side. Um, within that, um, you know, SBA has three primary areas of focus um, to support small business that includes funding programs, um, counseling and technical assistance, and um, working with small businesses, other federal agencies on um, um, federal contracts for small businesses. And of course, there is a fourth pillar of SBA, which is our role in disaster recovery. I think, um, you know, prior to COVID, maybe people, you know, probably were a little bit less aware of that unless you, you know, happen to be um, uh, involved in a federally declared disaster at some point. Um, of course, with COVID, that certainly changed, uh, changed things a little bit. And I think, you know, folks are a lot more generally aware, particularly because of the vast amount of COVID relief um, that it funneled through SBA during during the pandemic, actually approaching um, uh, 1.3 trillion dollars in you know, total COVID relief program dollars through through SBA, um, over 100 billion or around 100 billion in in New York State alone, which is um, pretty amazing. Um, I won't go into too much detail on that since those programs have, you know, kind of run their course and, um, you know, additional dollars are, are no longer available. Um, you know, I'll point out that, you know, with respect to the uh, COVID economic injury disaster loans, um, you know, those are the, I guess, the, the, the remaining active programs, you know, folks kind of got um, their full allotments or at least the appropriations ran out. So um, all the funding that could be gotten has been gotten um, at this point. Um, and SBA has, you know, spun up um, um, a new servicing center to help support those loans. So we do have some resources. In fact, I'll, I'll, sh I'll share them um, um, in a moment. Um, for folks that you know need to service those loans, right? There's there, there's a 30 year 
term for those loans. You know, there's an expectation of repayment. Um, 30 months from the original loan date um, is when payments are going to start for any given COVID idle borrower. Um, and you can manage a lot of that stuff. Um, I apologize, Dan. Are you still there? Can you hear? Just fine. Okay, it looks like I lost connection for just a second. Um, I am back. Um, when did you lose me, Michael? Um, just actually, just about a minute ago, you were still on the map portion, so I'm not sure if you got to the next slide or not. Okay. Or that slide the section. Um, you're just going over the um, kind of end of uh, pandemic relief programs. Right. Okay, great. So. Um, picking back up where I left off here. Um, <clears throat> so the COVID idle program is pretty much the, the last remaining, I, I guess you'd say, uh, still active program in that, you know, there was a lot of dollars that went out and um, those loans to borrowers were 30 year loans, right? Um, and, you know, we're still getting a lot of questions about that. Um, over the last few months, SBA has staffed up um, new COVID idle servicing centers, and we've added a lot of self-service capabilities to uh, those loans um, via new, a new MySBA loan portal. Um, so, um, you know, there is some enhanced functionality for self-service, making payments and that sort of thing. Um, if you visit sba.gov slash EIDL, easy enough URL to, to uh, remember, you're taken to this screen here, and <clears throat> I would direct folks to, you know, if you want to manage your COVID-19 EIDL, this is the page you kind of want to take a look at. Um, this is where you're going to see, you know, general updates about the program. You're going to see make a payment to SBA, a lot of those links, because again, this, the COVID EIDLs were loans, not grants, okay? Um, Congress is part of the uh, CARES Act and the covid IDL, um program launch did not give SBA the authority to, you know, or appropriations to forgive these loans. Uh, so currently, um, you know, SBA, you know, has to treat these like any normal commercial loan and, and service them accordingly. And um, if folks don't pay, then they can expect uh, collection activities from SBA. Um, however, there are some um, hardship deferment accommodations that are available to borrowers that folks can access via the new MySBA loan portal. Um, if their loan is under $200,000, you can do everything within the portal. Above that, you do need to contact the COVID idle uh, servicing center. Um, and you can see here under the request of lien subordination or other servicing actions, there's contact information um, for the COVID idle servicing uh, center. Okay. We do ask folks to kind of direct you know, um, all of their, their questions of the COVID idle services that are their best position to, you know, help you on your individual loan. Um, you know, particularly when it comes to things like changes of ownership and, and like I said, requests for subordination. Um, if you're wondering what a request for subordination is or why I'm mentioning that, um, as part of the loan authorization, when folks uh, uh, received a COVID idle loan, um, any loan over $25,000, um, a lien was placed on the business personal property. So furniture, fixtures, equipment, inventory, right? Um, and if you are obtaining new financing through another financial institution, you know, they may want an interest in that property, maybe a, a first position on that uh, property. So it is necessary to kind of, you know, put an application SBA for any subordinations on, on um, those liens. Other things like changes of ownership or getting a, a new owner to like a, assume a responsibility for the loan or anything like that, releasing collateral, you know, say you want to sell a piece of equipment, right? Um, all of that does require prior 
authorization from SBA. And this is not, you know, atypical for any type of commercial loan, right? Um, but, you know, folks should be aware that they need to reach out to COVID Idle Servicing SBA.gov for these types of things. So um, with that, you know, we'll kind of close the door on the COVID programs and we'll talk about all the other stuff that we do at SBA and, and we've done for, for many, 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 many years. Um, I mentioned at the beginning, our primary areas of focus are funding, our loan programs, our counseling and technical assistance programs, and our federal contracting programs. So um, talking about the loan programs first, um, you can see here, there's a link on our website and I'm not doing the PowerPoint slide because I think folks are probably PowerPointed to death. Plus, um, this is where the slides always direct you anyways, to our website. Um, and you can see we have a variety of uh, funding programs available for, for small businesses. Um, you can see here, they're primarily, yeah, I think SBA is primarily known for loans for startup or expansions. Um, there are also um, investment uh, vehicles um, for um, um, through a program called the Small Business Investment Company Program, which is for more mature companies where SBA funds uh, uh, equity investors to be able to make leverage investments into small businesses. Um, SBA has surety bond, a surety bond program to make it easier for uh, contractors, for example, in particular federal contractors to um, get the uh, 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 sufficient capital to secure a performance bond or a bid bond, for example. I'm not going to go into definitions for all these things because if you know what they are, you know what they are. Um, but SBA does <clears throat> um, provide some guarantees to you know, make it a little bit easier for businesses that don't have as much liquidity, for example, uh, to put up a, a funds for a bond. Um, and, you know, we always kind of have always said that, you know, SBA doesn't do grants. Um, and then COVID, and then PPP and all these other programs happened. Well, we're not, we're back to not doing grants. However, the federal government does do grants for scientific research and development. And we work with federal agencies on those programs. Uh, but that's more about like original research, right? And providing um, the, of, of interest to the federal government, Department of Defense, that sort of thing. Those are the granting agencies. Um, and we work with them to kind of promote those programs through the uh, Small Business Innovation Research Program. Um, but we're here to talk about mostly loans because that's what applies to the vast majority of uh, businesses. And SBA does uh, have loan programs, as I said, for startup or expansion. Um, but we don't do direct loans, okay? You can see here, we guarantee loans that lenders make to businesses to expand this, you know, the, the universe of um, borrowers that are, would be eligible for commercial lending. I think what, you know, a common um, experience for small businesses, and I think folks are kind of generally aware of that, is that it can be hard to get startup financing for, uh, for a, like a conventional loan from a bank, for example. Um, and even if you're an existing business without, you know, significant collateral um, uh, or, you know, a, a good operating history, sometimes three to five years based on a bank's um, um, credit policies, it might be difficult for an existing business to get a loan. And that's where SBA steps in. Um, what we do is work with banks to provide guarantees uh, on, you know, eligible small businesses and <clears throat> That essentially is an insurance policy for um, the bank. And that guarantee can be anywhere from 50 to as much as 90% of the total you know, loan amount uh, that SBA is guaranteeing or insuring to the lender to make a loan that they, again, otherwise wouldn't be able to make due to, again, what it being a startup or not having collateral or things of that nature. None of those are reasons that you know, uh, would make a uh, make it so an SBA, you know, uh, wouldn't guarantee that loan, okay? So it reduces the lender's risk, essentially. Um, we have a variety of loan programs, and, you know, the loans can be used for um, 
any typical you know commercial loan purpose, whether it is building a building or working capital or purchasing inventory or doing a build out on a new lease for a business or you know uh, buying equipment, right? Um, <clears throat> You know, there's nothing, I guess, inherently different about an SBA loan than from a, a, a any loan you would get from a from a bank. Lines of credit, even, um, can be guaranteed by SBA. Um, what SBA does is simply um, set some upper limits to terms and interest rates um, that bar that lenders can charge for these loans and the terms that they can extend to borrowers. So long as those, you know, to ensure those loans are favorable to borrowers and not predatory in any way. Beyond that, the lenders do make the, you know, they make the credit decision. You know, you apply to a lender, you know, you hopefully get a business plan, maybe work with an SBA partner, which I'll talk about a lot here in a moment, uh, to, to, to build out your business plan. You apply to a bank and then the bank decides, hey, we need SBA's help. And the bank decides, OK, you know, here's the best loan product for you and here's what the rate and terms are going to be you know now you can negotiate with the bank just as you would for any any loan um, but sba is not dictating those terms because it starts as the bank's loan um, you can see here some of the different types of loans we have um, uh, uh, several different programs that borrowers can benefit from that you can certainly read more about um, generally speaking 7a loans are kind of the workhorse loan they have the uh, widest scope and they're, you know, the, the biggest loan program of SBA. Um, it can be pretty much any type of uh, loan like we uh, like currently previously mentioned. Um, the 504 program, which is really more for long-term fixed rate financing, like real estate and, you know, large pieces of equipment, um, which tend to have longer terms. And we have a micro loan program where we uh, provide funding to what we call intermediary lenders, uh, where we loan them money to in turn relend to uh, small businesses that um, uh, maybe need fewer dollars. You can see here that the loans are up to 50,000. Um, or perhaps, you know, don't fit into the uh, 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 conventional lending models, you know, Micro loan intermediary lenders are more likely to lend based on character and have alternative credit policies, um, while also pairing their loans with technical assistance to their borrowers, which is part of the micro loan program. Um, for any of these, uh, there's a, quite a few ways you can find lenders. You can use the find lenders button right here on the page. Um, and <clears throat> what that takes you to is a tool called Lender Match. And it works by, you know, you create a profile um, and just, you know, describe your project, right? What type of financing you need and what type of business is it? What's your experience in the industry? You know, is it a startup loan? Is it, is it you know, what type of deal is it, right? Um, and potential lenders, which, you know, many SBA participating lenders and micro lenders uh, are signed up for lender match. Um, They'll get a notification and then they'll reach out to you to, you know, talk terms, right? Um, or at least get to the point where, you know, you can submit an application to that lender, right? Um, there is some good helpful information on this, you know, describe what you need, some things that you really should already have in place prior to going to lender match is really, you know, having a business plan, know how much funding you need, what you're going to use it for. You know, be able to explain your, your credit history, personal, right, and business, um, and all these other things, okay? Um, so, you know, if you're in business or you're thinking about starting a business, there are a few, you know, there are some things that you, you need to do some homework, right, before you get to the point where you reach out to lenders to set yourself up for success for lending, right? Um, and these are some of the, some of the things you kind of have to have in place, okay? Um, the good news is we can help you with this stuff too. <laughs> um, you know, I mentioned that counseling and technical assistance is a big part of what SBA does. Um, there's actually, you know, I'll go back to the, the homepage. There's actually a tremendous amount of, uh, 
valuable, I think, information and, and resources just right on our website, right? We have a, you know, start your business, a, a business guide tool, right? Um, where, you know, it can help you kind of work through this process, evaluate some of the basic things you need to do that apply to any business, right? Um, help with just general issues for managing your business, whether it's finances, you know, HR, marketing, sales, et cetera. Um, there's a lot of great information for folks that are DIYers and, you know, there's a lot of self-service, um, resources on our website, um, that you can work through. Um, and I would encourage folks kind of like, you know, uh, uh, explore it a little bit. Um, it's organized pretty straightforward fashion. There is, in addition to, you know, some of the topical things, we have a learning center, um, and a couple of other kind of programs that are um, varying degrees of, you know, uh, uh, workshops versus, you know, instructor led versus asynchronous. The learning center is kind of more of the um, um, take these courses as you go type of thing, right? And you can see there's a variety of topics you can work through. OK, um, the Ascent platform is uh, geared towards women entrepreneurs, and it provides some modules for um, different types of kind of small business journeys. Um, while it's targeted towards women entrepreneurs, any business can um, or anybody actually can tap into this. this is all kind of asynchronous and um, you can explore this tool, too. OK, um, a lot of helpful information in here. Um, Boots to Business is a program we offer to veterans and um, their uh, spouses, and that is an instructor-led kind of curriculum um, that has kind of two components. One is the Boots to Business that is provided directly to transitioning service members. It's a two-day um, course um, that folks can, um, well, eligible transitioning service members or their family can tap into. And there is a version called Boots to Business Reboot, which interestingly, I don't see it on this page. They must have moved some, some things around um, that is offered locally on kind of an ad hoc basis um, in various uh, locations across the country. They're typically led by um, our veteran business outreach centers, which I'll share more about um, in a moment. Um, and finally, we have the Thrive Program, which is uh, happens once a year um, across the country. Um, there's uh, locations that, uh, well, all across the country, you can see here, district offices all across the country host this program. And it is a kind of a cohort model for mature companies, right, to develop new skills and develop a strategic plan to launch their business to the next level. Um, the window for this this year is closed, but it'll open up again um, next year around probably April, May timeframe. Um, and the participating offices will change every year. Our office in Syracuse has hosted programs in years past um, here and in Albany. We didn't participate this year. Uh, we may have an opportunity to participate again next year. So it's kind of one of those things where, um, you know, it, it varies from year to year. Um, but it is an excellent program to be aware of um, and keep an eye out for um, um, uh, communications uh, regarding that program coming along next year. But if you want a little bit more hands-on assistance, um, we have uh, a variety of SBA funded and non-SBA funded, uh, we call them resource partners and partners across the country um, that provide hands-on, one-on-one technical assistance, workshops, training to small businesses. Um, our uh, um, primary resource partners include our small business development centers, which is a nationwide network of um, paid, you know, centers with paid advisors on staff that provide help with business plans and financial projections and everything you need, um, all of which is at no cost from, you know, with respect to one-on-one -on -one assistance. Um, 
and is available, like I said, across the country. Here in New York State, we have 23 centers, for example, um, and the centers are hosted by SUNY, which is kind of cool. So they're usually co-located with um, SUNY-affiliated institutions um, across, across the state. We also have SCORE, which is a, um, actually, let me just go here. There we go. Uh, SCORE, which is an all-volunteer organization that provides mentorship and counseling to businesses, again, you know, at no cost for one-on-one -on -one services. Um, many, you know, oftentimes a SCORE volunteer might be a retired business owner or business executive. Sometimes they're still in business and they just want to donate their time to, you know, kind of help mentor the next generation of business owners in their community. And again, there's chapters all across the country. Um, you know, here in upstate, um, we have in, you know, my district, the central New York, um, chapter that's headquartered in, um, here in Syracuse and there's branches in Auburn and Binghamton, uh, and Utica. There's also an Albany chapter. Um, they're looking to, uh, uh, spin up a new branch in uh, the North country up in Watertown, um, which is pretty cool. Um, there's also chapters in Buffalo and in Rochester. Um, and of course you can click these links, find a mentor or find an SBDC in your area. Um, veteran business outreach centers, I mentioned, um, they predominantly focus on the boost to business program and often host, um, the boots to business reboot for, you know, veterans and their families that are not in service anymore. You can find the, uh, outreach center in your area. I'll just tell you there's one um, cover that covers uh, our state. They're headquartered in Albany um, and they serve the entire state of New York. Um, and you can reach out to them at any time if you're uh, if you'd like. And finally, we have women's business centers um, in upstate. We have women's business center in Buffalo and we have one in Syracuse. Um, and again, they focus on, you know, primarily, you know, they target their counseling and resources to women entrepreneurs, but um, all their services are offered on a non-discriminatory basis, so um, anybody's welcome to participate. So you can read more about, you know, the resource partners. Um, I'll share another way, uh, another resource partner, which is our community navigators. So that is a pilot program that was created with the, um, it was the Economic Aid Act. And um, this was funding that was provided to community organizations to expand SBA's reach to underserved communities. Um, there is a number of, you know, it, it kind of, you envision a hub and smoke model where there's like a hub organization that provided funding to, you know, maybe smaller spoke organizations that were located in targeted communities. That's the way to think about it. Uh, we have a variety of hubs and spokes in upstate um, in um, Rochester Economic Development uh, Corporation is a community navigator grantee, the Urban League of Rochester, I believe. Uh, don't quote me on this. I'll show you where we can, you know, you can find any of these folks um, across the country. But um, again, they're part of the SBA family. They provide finance, you know, uh, uh, assistance with everything we've talked about, right, in terms of uh, helping you with your business plan, training, that sort of thing. But they're just a little more targeted to certain communities, okay? Um, I think there were 55 total hub organizations that were provided funding and something like, oh, right here, 450 spokes, 51 hubs and 450 spokes across the country that received funding. Um, for really, you know, you don't have to remember any of this, though, um, because the simplest thing to do, I should start with this, uh, is to just find your, your, your nearest resource. So whether you're in, you know, here in Syracuse, you type, up, type in your zip code um, and find, you know, the nearest SBA funded partner. You can see, you know. Um, by typing in your zip code, you'll find which CERP office you're served by, in this case, my office. Women's Business Center is located here, Central New York SCORE, uh, some of our lenders like uh, Greater Syracuse Business Development Corporation, et cetera. You can find the, 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 the nearest resource and you can even filter this tool um, to find, you know, well, maybe I'm interested in exports or procurement technical assistance. You can kind of play with the tool. Um, accordingly. So 
and you know you can always like zoom out. So that's the that's the quickest way to find you know the nearest uh, resource that you might be able uh, to benefit from local uh, hands-on assistance. Um, and of course, you can always reach out to you know uh, my office directly. Here's the number. There's a form that you can use to uh, contact us if you prefer to uh, communicate via email. That works too. Um, and you know we can help you. We can help you find the the resource you need. So the last thing I want to talk about is uh, federal contracting. Um, and um, again, I mentioned SBA's role is working both with small businesses and federal agencies. So. The federal, the United States federal government is the biggest purchaser in the world. I don't think it surprises anybody, um, but it's somewhere in the order of 500 billion, give or take a billion or 100 billion dollars every year. It's called non-defense discretionary spending. And there is an, a government-wide goal to direct 23% of that spending to small businesses. Um, and again, uh, the SBA, we've got folks that work with the federal agencies to help set goals for, you know, at an agency level for small business um, set asides. And then we work with businesses directly to get, I guess you'd call it contracting ready. Um, and, you know, we provide workshops. Most district offices have somebody that's actually dedicated to, you know, federal contracting that can counsel businesses on um, um, you know, what the opportunity really is. Within that, there are additional, uh, we call them set-aside programs. I think they might be located here in their contracting assistance programs um, that businesses may be able to um, um, apply to be part of, whether it's a, um, um, the Women-Owned Small Business Program, Veteran Contracting Assistance Program. There's a, there's a lot of programs, okay? Um, and, you know, there's rules, you know, the federal government, there's a lot of rules for that, um, most of which were established, not most of which, all of which were established via, um, you know, statute, right? Um, and, you know, we can advise, you know, folks on, on how to, they might be able to benefit from, from any uh, or many of these programs. You know, an individual business might, might qualify for several of these designations and certifications. So all of which are designed to kind of, you know, give small businesses uh, 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 a competitive advantage in doing business with the federal government. Okay? And we're happy to kind of, you know, talk to folks about that. And you can see there are additional goals for all of these things from a federal government perspective um, to set aside some of these contracts. So, um, again, we've got folks in our office. Many, many, many of our resource partners have a tremendous amount of expertise in these contracting assistance programs, and you know we're kind of happy to you know uh, 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 happy to kind of you know counsel folks and and you know identify what the opportunity is for their business. I will say generally, as a uh, generally speaking, doing business with the federal government isn't really for startups. You know, uh, or it, it can be difficult for a startup to to compete. Um, you know, so when we talk about being contracting ready, you know, you know, we, 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 not we, the SBA, but, you know, federal um, government um, uh, procurement officers, you know, like to see businesses that have some sort of work history that they can uh, uh, demonstrate their capability of performing on, you know, contracts and that sort of thing. So, but we, you know, we work with, you know, we work with uh, folks kind of evaluate that. We also work with, you know, state and local governments too, because a lot of times, you know, that's where businesses kind of get their feet wet is, you know, working first with county or municipal governments before they start getting into state and federal contracts. Subcontracting is another option. Um, I, I think many folks aren't aware that, you know, you've got like, we call them prime contractors, but large prime contractors think like Lockheed Martin, um, for example. Um, they get contracts from the government too, but for those larger contracts, SBA literally requires, um, and the agencies require that those big corporations have subcontracting plans to direct a certain amount of dollars for those larger contracts to small businesses too. So that's another way you can get into 
doing business with the federal government is as a subcontractor. So ultimately all this you know, should be part of like a well-developed business plan, right? So I think no matter what, it kind of comes back to, you know, figure out what it is you want to do or where you want to expand your business. And SBA does have resources to kind of provide guidance, technical assistance and funding via our various loan programs to help um, get you to that point. So with that, I think that's a decent amount of time for uh, me and I'll uh, stop sharing. And I don't know if we want to open it up for Q&A or if there was any questions, Michael. Yeah, address. great. Thank you so much, Dan. I appreciate it. Um, and again, on behalf of Claudia, thank you very much for doing this. This is incredibly comprehensive. Um, if anybody does have any questions, feel free to use the Q&A function below. Um, while that happens, I am going to share my screen just because, Dan, I know you cover kind of a massive portion of upstate New York, but we actually split our district with the Buffalo SBA. Right. Um, it's so almost half and half, isn't it? Yeah, so just for the sake of the recording, I'm just going to share my screen and kind of share the um, contact information for the Buffalo SBA office as well, so that if anybody wants to kind of see um, that they have the same exact website set up um, as well and all the same resources and everything, just just different offices in Rochester and Buffalo, and they both cover pretty much the other half of our district. So two different SBA offices, both with the same mission, both with the same service, um, excellent people in both of them. So, um, but yeah, since the recording will be taking that as well, um, that way people can see the uh, local offices out there. Um, and let me just double check to see in the Q&A. Um, I don't believe I see anything in there. Uh, so I think we can probably leave it at that. But again, this uh, webinar is recorded, so we will be posted on the official website for the Congresswoman um, over in her webinar series. And feel free to reach out to our office if you have any questions, and feel free to reach out to the SBA, both Syracuse uh, Buffalo um, headquarters for them. Thank you so much, Dan. I appreciate it. And this was very comprehensive. So I'm I'm very happy. And I know a couple of our team members who are relatively new wanted to see this as well. So thank you. Great. It was my pleasure. Like I said, we're happy. Uh, we appreciate the congressman's support and uh, appreciate the opportunity. So thanks, okay. Michael. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good rest of the day.